so we have our terrain model. We have our existing terrain has been created. And so I, now I want to create a new file for my geometry. So I'm going to bring in my ALG. And so we want to make sure that we are in a 2D seed. So geometry is going to start with a 2D seed file. Okay, so we're just going to name this geometry. And then we're going to import this from an ALG file that we had loaded in inroads. Again, you could use a GPK, you know, from Geopack side, you could use a land XML. Uh, so if you have data that's project data from other products, you could bring it in here as well. So I'm in my blank 2D file. So I'm going to go to geometry. I'm going to import my geometry. And so you can see as we pull this file type down, these are all the different file types that we could import. Okay, but I'm working with an ALG file. So I'm going to import my ALG. And for this project, all I have is my one highway. That's the name of my alignment is highway. And it has a highway that is the vertical alignment that is a child of this. Sorry, the naming convention is a little confusing because it's the same for this project, but but they will be tied and they will be connected together. Okay, so one thing that we've um, added recently was setting the feature definitions for your linear features when you're when they're brought in. So I want to go ahead and make sure that I have my linear features feature definition set. And geom baseline is fine for me. And I do want to create civil rules. Okay, and this is going to create a civilized horizontal and vertical geometry and not just bring in a, a smart line or a line string. Okay, so I'm gonna import that. We'll let that import and create our geometry to import. And so now we have our center line geometry that has been imported in. So I'm gonna zoom in here and you'll notice that I do have this geom baseline. It has the element is named highway uh, and we do have a feature definition that's assigned. So I could come in and I could annotate this now if I wanted to use a different annotation group. I'm going to forego that because this is a very long uh, alignment. So it actually just takes a little bit to process. And so we're, for time constraints, we're going to skip that part. Uh, not necessary for what we're trying to bring in with our data, just migrating it forward. I'm going to select my geometry and I want to make sure that I open up my profile model. And I just want to verify that it brought in my profile and that it is set active. In the ALG, it will maintain the active vertical geometry when you bring it into OpenRose Designer. So if I were to have multiple geometries, it would import all of those geometries, but the one that was active in the ALG will be set as my active profile. All right, so now that we're in this file, so we have our geometry file, we have our terrain model that's been imported. The next step would be start importing our corridor. So our IRD file actually maintains the super elevation. So I'm gonna use that super elevation from the IRD file. There are other ways that you can import that. BB will go over importing it through a CSV, but since the IRD stores it, I'm gonna utilize what I have saved in my data. So I'm gonna create another file and I'm going to create this from my 2D seed. And I'm just going to call this the WS19 because this will be the, the corridor. This will be the project data that we're going to reference everything into. So we'll let that process, we'll let that create the file. We will reference in our information that we just created. So this is that federated workflow. So we're going to go to into our references. You notice, so this is still a blank DGN file. There's nothing in this file. Go into our references, and I'm going to attach the files that I created. Okay, so I have my existing terrain that I created, and I also have the geometry that I created. So I'm going to select both of those. I'm going to bring those in as coincident world. And then if I fit that view, you'll notice how it has brought in my terrain and it has brought in the geometry. So I can turn off the terrain display and all I have, I still maintain that geometry display. So even though we set the surface active 
in the existing terrain. I always like to double check since I'm bringing this data forward. I want to double check that I have that set as my active terrain model. Um, so I'm going to go to that terrain from since I referenced it in, and I still want to set that as active. Because when we bring in our corridor data, we want it to find that existing surface. So I'm going to turn off the existing terrain. And one other thing to note, now that I set that to be a active terrain, it has now created that 3D space because that's what creates the 3D space is the terrain model being set active. And that's why we come into a 2D file because we need to maintain our 2D reference graphics. When we set that terrain surface active, it's going to create that 3D model. Okay, so I'm going to turn off my terrain because that's just information that I don't need to see uh, as I'm running and importing this data. And the best practice would be to import your IRD file and separate out your super elevation from your corridor data because you want to maintain all of your data in its own DGN file and reference them in together. It's actually not necessary in this case, but that is definitely best practice. Some of the videos that we have, um, the resources that we have, they will go through that process. Uh, I'm not going to do that today. I'm just going to bring in the corridor, but we'll see how it bringing it into this file, it's going to maintain that super elevation data. Just good to split it out. Okay, so I'm going to import my corridor. I'm going to import it from the IRD file. So I want to make sure that I browse to the correct file. So I'm going to select my IRD. And then the corridor that I want to bring in, I said before, is that overlay corridor. If we did not bring in geometry, if we did not have our geometry imported, the corridor is tied to that highway horizontal geometry. If that highway horizontal geometry does not exist here in OpenRose Designer, it will let you know that. It will not create the corridor because it doesn't have that base geometry to be based off of. But since I have referenced that information in, it will find that horizontal alignment and it will associate and assign that corridor, this corridor that it's creating, it will assign it to that geometry. Okay, so we'll let that process for a little bit. And as I mentioned, this is actually the, the super elevation is stored in the IRD file. So it's going to create our super elevation sections. It's going to create our corridor. It's going to bring in our point controls and our templates. And so once it's done processing here, it's going to display all your, your corridor graphics. Okay, so we're going to double check just a couple things. So we can see now that we have our corridor that's been created, and you can see our super elevation graphics. So our super elevation has been created as well. So I want to do a couple things just for cleanup, just to make sure that as I'm creating this information, I'm as I'm stepping through the process, I wanna make sure I, I do things in orders that they need to be done, because I'll forget if I don't. So a couple things that you wanna do is, uh, you want to set your feature definitions as you're importing this data. Okay, so for my super elevation, I'm just going to select on that super elevation and I want to assign super elevation feature definition. And then I want to do the same thing to my corridor. So I'm going to select my corridor and I want to make sure that I set the proper feature definition for the corridor design stage that I'm in. So I'm going to come into road and I'm just going to do this as a design um, just so it doesn't process quite so much information because it will take a little bit to reprocess that surface. One other thing that, that you will want to do when you bring in this data, since we have brought up the ITL, so the ITL can be open, but you'll notice that you, you'll need to go through this feature remapper so you can bring in the correct data, uh, so you have the correct feature definitions that are assigned to your corridor. So I want to make sure that I have my remapped ITL file opened, so I'm going to open that really quick. So I have my remapped ITL. Okay, so this has my regular overlay template in it, and you can see it has color, so it has my feature definitions. And then I want to synchronize my templates from my corridor to pick up that remapped ITL file. So it's going to reprocess this, and then we'll do one quick check in our corridor um, just to show how. It's brought in all of our correct templates. It's brought in our point controls and they're assigned 
and that we have super elevation. So that's done processing. I'm going to open up the corridor objects, select my corridor. So you'll notice that I have that my one template drop. It's my regular overlay and maintain the 50 foot interval. And then for the point controls, it's still since we are in the file that has the super elevation we imported from the IRD file, um, the super elevation gets recognized, finds the correct point and the correct super elevation control line that it creates. And remember at the beginning, I showed you that we had three that were enabled, but my vertical for my center line was not. So you see that brings it in as false. So it translates all that data over into this new corridor that it is creating. Okay, and so one last thing that I want to show, one last verification is I want to open up the cross-sectional view of this corridor. Let me select on that corridor. And we'll open up a dynamic cross-section view just to show the cross-sectional view of the roadway with the existing surface displayed and with all of my features from my template featureized there. Okay, so you can see we have our existing ground. We have our point controls, the magenta box. So we're not in a super elevation section yet, but as we moved into a curve, it would show that super elevation and it brings in our overlay shapes from our leveling components. So like I said, very quick, this process, but just want to run through, you know, that, we were able to, and what did that take, 15, 20 minutes? We were able to bring in a terrain model, bring in geometry, bring in our corridors to bring our data up from SS2 of inroads. You know, similar process is going to be for Geopack SS2. BB is going to touch on a couple of those options that we have for that. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.